Well, hi, everybody. I'm Karen from Port Prep, and I'm here with Sam Hardwick. And Sam had some exciting news for us recently. And so I'm going to introduce Sam. Maybe you can tell us, what's the exciting news? Uh, the exciting news is I've received a conditional offer to uh, the architecture program at Ryerson. Oh, fantastic. That in I September. Was so excited when I heard the news <laughs> for you. So Sam took a course with us at Port Prep called Architecture and Design Portfolios. And Sam, I'd like to hear from you. What made you reach out to us to get help on your portfolio? I had decided I wanted to go back to school and architecture was something that when I was, I'm a little bit older now, but when I was in grade 12, it's something that I wanted to pursue initially, but uh, didn't have the confidence to do so. So I went a different educational direction. And I was at a point in my life now where I wanted to change career paths. And I thought this was something that I wanted to do previously in my life. And I wanted to at least give it the time it deserved, whether it worked out or not would have been fine with me, but I wanted to have no regrets moving forward with my life, knowing could I have done this? This is something I wanted to do from the very beginning and I didn't pursue it when I was younger. Uh, and I think it worked out in this way because I think I'm in a better mental position uh, to pursue it now based on my age and experience. Uh, so I started looking at what that entailed, how to get into arch architecture programs in schools, and obviously the majority of which, at least in Ontario and Toronto, uh, require a portfolio. So that was my step one. I didn't have a portfolio. I didn't really have any artwork to speak of, and I didn't even know where to begin. So I started, as anyone does when they don't know anything, is go on to how to's on YouTube, how to portfolio on YouTube. And through my YouTube sleuthing, I found a video for Port Prep where uh, successful students and students who have gotten into different architecture programs were talking about their process and interviewing. And from there, I found the Port Prep link. And that's when I decided to take that first course to how to build a portfolio. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, I remember you were telling me one time that what you really liked about hearing from those, those students we were talking to, it was just them talking about their process and what they did, how they got accepted, and that you found some really interesting advice from a couple of past students. Do you remember what that advice was that you found so helpful? The videos were great because it wasn't the same student over and over. It, it wasn't this Pro, the prodigal student who's been wanting to be an architect since they were 10 years old and had five years worth of experience before they hit grade school or anything along those lines. Yeah, there were a couple of those students and I watched those videos, um, but there were also videos for students coming from different backgrounds. I watched one video from a guy who after high school, he traveled for a bit and then he decided he wanted to pursue. Um, I watched a video of a grade 12 student who chose architecture in his grade 12th year and didn't have the preconceived knowledge that that's what they wanted to do. And it was the plethora of videos was great because they offered different advice regarding what's more important, how to make your portfolio, what to present with your portfolio. Um, and it was good because it it was good general advice, but it helped tailor what I needed to do to create the portfolio that I wanted to present. So it was right. super helpful watching these videos because you kind of, you get all this advice and all this information and that's great, but then you got to start refining and you refine that advice. Okay. That's great advice, but does it apply to me? Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. And that kind of, that was a good stepping stone as I entered this whole process of knowing what I wanted to do and how I needed to do it. Right. Yeah, because when you come to something without prior knowledge or experience, it must be a little bit daunting, you know, and, and to say, because you already have like an undergrad and a master's in another field to and then to realize, oh, my gosh, I really want to study architecture and I need to do this for myself. And yet to feel 
the confidence to that you could do that at this point like was there something in one of those videos that made you feel encouraged that you could do this yes and i think what made me feel like i could do it was that it wasn't the same student every time doing this interview who was applying and getting in. Right. It made me feel like, okay, I don't have to be a grade 12 student with three years worth of portfolio work to even have a chance to get in. Go from having no portfolio and getting to a point where I could have be competitive to be accepted into a portfolio, uh, into a program within a year. Yeah because it, it, it is it is really competitive. And then to start without having all of that, and then there were other challenges too, because you needed to upgrade some of your academics as well. Yeah. So that was another thing that, you know, is really well worth doing. And I've often told other students, if you, you know, you need to have a fairly high average, you know, you're, you're, you want to be an 80 or over 85, 87 is better you know, and so I've had to encourage some students, you know what, it's actually worth it. Even if you're in college now and you're stressed, you, you gotta have that average as well to make sure you get an interview, right? So if it's a school that interviews like Waterloo, for example. Um, wow. So yeah, upgrading English or taking physics or, you know, calculus or whatever. Um, what did you have to take to get yourself ready? Well, uh, luckily my master's thesis paper sufficed my high school English requirement, but I have to, I'm currently finishing up physics and currently in the calculus pro, calculus high school as well through the TVO ILC online learning. And that was another thing going back to uh, doing these high school courses. But to anyone who thinks that it's, oh, I don't know anything about physics. I don't know. I don't know anything about physics. I didn't take physics in high school. I didn't take calculus in high school. And that doesn't mean you can't do it. Uh, I, I think my current grade in the physics is a 97. It's, it's a class that it, it was very overwhelming at the beginning. There was a lot of right at the very start. I thought to myself, I can't do this. This is too hard, but then you relax, then you calm down, then you start watching videos, then you start doing research and a week or two in, I was rolling with this physics. And I think anyone, anyone who feels that they, oh, it's too hard to go back, or I don't have any idea if this is going to be too hard. You just got to grind it out. You just got to try. <laughs> that seems to yeah. have been, I think that was my entire portfolio journey has just been trying, grinding it out, keep going, keep pursuing, keep pushing. Yeah, you know, and I saw that in your in your work with your portfolio, um, taking the the course architectural portfolios, um, and I, you know, I wish I had your wisdom when I was in school because when I was in high school, I wanted to be an architect or a fine artist, and I didn't have confidence to either of those things, so I chose something else that I thought was in between, which was interior design. You know, and I've had great success and I had a great education um, and I have studied fine art as well, um, but I've still never really been happy. And yes, I went through midlife crisis as a result. And so I'm so glad that you figured that out early enough in your life and, and had the guts to do something about it, to act on it. Because I thought, oh, I'm not good at math. Um, I, I'm an art student, I can't do science. And, you know, I actually, I've watched physics videos now. I love, you know, all that stuff. I think it's fascinating. And, you know, I had too much doubt in myself as a young person to even try, you know, and I've regretted it ever since. Um, and I've worked on architectural like projects in interior design because I love architecture. Um, but it really, I encourage anybody, if you think you want to be an architect, whether you're younger and you're not sure if you can do it, or older and going back to school like that's what's so inspiring about your Sam your story Sam that you know it's like oh I take physics oh I don't know if I can do this but you're doing it and the fact of trying just getting out there and learning and you know because people can learn all kinds of things with some effort and diligence and I was so impressed by uh, the work that you did where where you were starting 
in the course uh, that you took with us and where you ended up you and you worked so hard <laughs> you really put you did more than i suggested that you would do um, many many ideas many renditions of ideas uh, trying to really get the best idea you could and then trying to pick up the skills to catch up with your ideas one of the things that's great about being a more mature student is there's that developed thought process and the will um, and the realization that hard work is necessary. Um, and that, and the desire to make a change in your life, I think really was a good fuel to help you get through those hurdles of maybe you didn't have some of the experience that maybe some of the younger students might have because they've had exposure to different courses or whatever than you did. Um, but you, you were able to do it. And I think your, uh, a couple of things, your, your attitude and putting great effort in your openness and willingness to learn and the, the those transferable skills you had of conceptual thinking really helped and you were a delight to have in the course and I know the other students really benefited from having you in the class and just the discussions we had this open sort of forum of sharing ideas and supporting each other um, in our endeavors was really fantastic. And I remember you had some interesting um, input from another instructor you had, I think when you were working on your masters, yeah. um, you were working on a project. So I always recommend that students make some sort of thesis project in their portfolio, some kind of project you really care about um, that tries to solve some kind of problem for humanity or the planet that you feel invested in and interested in and that you've done a bit of research that kind of thing and you picked a really interesting project and in that project where you were exploring it and um, sharing your ideas visually and in our discussions in the group um, you had some great insights to help other students as well as they were going through their explorations. And I remember that you told us about an instructor you had that talked about the meanings of things. Do you re remember what I'm referring to? And could you yes. tell us more about that? And it's, uh, I, I can go into this more as we go through my portfolio. Oh, that might be a good time to talk about it. Maybe just in a nutshell, um, since I mentioned it. Yeah, absolutely. It It's every, every single aspect of the design has to have a purpose or should serve a purpose. So, and I think that what most students, and this is what I learned from her, and I think it, it applies to more fields than just any creative field, but everything, don't pick a font because you like the font. Why, why, why the font, the font you should pick should serve a purpose to your overall theme, or don't pick a background color because your favorite color is that color or because it looks good, which again is great. And I'm not criticizing that, but it should, why is the background blue? Why is your font Times New Roman over Arial? Why did you choose a sans, a sans serif font over a serif font? Everyone thinks about the design and they plop the design on the page, but there's so much more that you can get out of this design with every aspect, even the layout. Why did you choose that layout? Why did you choose the size of the layout? These, these questions, I think, can really, at least for me, I think it helped my portfolio stand out because every aspect of my portfolio was thought of. At least anything, I didn't leave anything to, oh, I like it, that's why. Yeah, but because what you were sharing about that professor, she was saying, like, everything has meaning right yeah and everything everything and whether you realize it or not and and so that because the part of making a portfolio is obviously to have awesome ideas and our course kind of helps students develop their ideas and then how to present and evolve their ideas like so part of it is making portfolio pieces the other part is presenting your portfolio in a, in a professional manner and realizing that every single thing you do actually carries meaning in it and um and to have thoughtfulness about all aspects of it so it, it is really a, a long process that does take months to really do it 
well and to the place of getting accepted. And uh, so I think it's going to be really interesting to see your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and but I guess before we just before we look at it, how did you feel at the beginning of taking this on? And then how did you feel as you evolved through the process in in taking the course? At what point did it shift for you where you started to feel more confident? So how did you feel before, during, and then after? I would say, in all honesty, at the beginning, I was ignorantly confident. I and and I I don't I, I don't say that as a criticism. I think it's good that I had confidence going in, um, and I think that it's important that people be confident in the work that they present because it wasn't that my my work was bad compared to what it is now, but it was the best that I could do at that time. And I think that's a good piece of advice that people should keep in their minds. It doesn't matter how good you are at anything. It's that you're, whatever you're doing, it's do your best job at it. Make sure it is the best version of whatever you can do at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's so it made it easier when I looked at people whose work was better than mine. I would say to myself, I can't do what they're doing yet. And it's not about how smart you are. It's the same with physics and calculus. It's about how many hours you're really willing to put in. And I, I would see the work of the people in our class and they were better. They were better at drawing than I was. But the work that I was presenting, I was confident in it because it was the best work that I could do. Now, when I say ignorantly, it's because I didn't realize how far I needed to go. <laughs> um, so after those first, it was it was eye-opening to see how much further ahead some of these students were than me. Uh, and that, but it, it never made me feel like I needed to give up. It just made me feel like, okay, I, I got to put in a lot more hours than I thought I needed to, but that's fine because it, it's just how much am I willing to do? And I think that was the turning point in all honesty was probably week one critiques because after re week one critiques and seeing the work of the people that, essentially I was competing against for spots in this program. <laughs> it made me realize how many, how many more hours I was going to need to put into that. But, and now, now that I'm done again, I, I still look at portfolios on YouTube and I believe that there, there are aspects of their work that is better than mine. And that, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm comfortable with that. Obviously because I got in, I think that helps, but <laughs> I know that the portfolio I presented, and I, I told you this uh, before I heard the decision, I said, whether I get in or not, I know that this is the best work I could have possibly presented. And I, I could be comfortable with that feeling that if they don't accept it, that's fine. It means I'm not good enough, but this is as good as I could have done. So I think that was the change. Is it changed from, changed from ignorant confidence to, I guess, humble confidence. <laughs> That's actually a good growth, you know, and one of the I, things that you discovered is that you were conceptually really strong, right? And you understood the power of everything that you did had meaning. And so that's why you put a lot of effort into your layout to make sure that you could use everything at your disposal oh. so that, that you had and that you could do that would show your aptitude for architecture without necessarily being the best artist per se. And this is the thing that's so important. Like one of the videos you watched in the past, that student was not the best artist. He said he got accepted in his year and the sort of the overconfident best artist in this, the, his high school who also applied didn't get in. Or this other guy that didn't draw near as well did because architecture is not art, it's design, <laughs> it's thinking. Yeah. And you have high level thinking, which is really important. And you know how to articulate your ideas um, and really flesh them out. That's probably, so you, we found what are your strengths, really built up those strengths to show those. That's what really is important. So what are your strengths? But what are your weaknesses too? Identify what they are and work on them by learning and putting effort in to get them to a place where at least uh, there's competency so you were able to do that, plus highlight the great things about yourself. 
and they saw that in you, just like that another student that you felt inspired by, same thing happened for him. And he got early acceptance because they saw this is an ideas person, right? Who knows how to present themselves professionally because that's part of being an architect as well, how to visually communicate your ideas, right? So, um, and I remember that you used to, to, the first, early in the class, you'd make all these apologies about your work and uh, knowing that it's not, you know, technically good enough yet, but you had such zeal and effort. And then as we went through the course, your confidence kept going up and up and you felt more and more able and you, you started with no idea to pretty good idea of how to do this, <laughs> <laughs> that, that you came out with some good work. So with that, let's look at your work. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. everybody will be interested to see. And you're right. There are students whose technical skills are far above yours. Um, it's true. And a lot of the students that take our classes, they're not necessarily the, the most gifted students. Like, because I also review people's portfolios that don't need to take a course. They just want help how to put their portfolio together in the end. So there are some really amazing portfolios that get submitted. Um, but I think what's great for, it's good to know that you can say, okay, I know I don't have all the skills, but I have the desire. I've got some good ideas. Let me learn how. And, you know, and that realization that you're somewhere in the <laughs> spectrum of all the various kinds of students that decide they want to do this. And we all have different skills and abilities and things that we bring to bear. What's so important I find about the way I run the course is to help people find what is their strengths and pull up any uh, sort of deficiencies up to a competent level so that you have that opportunity to get accepted. And I'm so excited that you did. <laughs> um, but you also, even if you didn't get accepted, you know you pursued what you wanted to do with to the best of your ability. And that helps you really feel good about yourself, you know, and you don't end up with regrets like I have later in life, <laughs> right? So I'm so happy for that. Okay, so let's go and look at your work. Uh, so this is my title page. Now, and again, I think this is a testament. I think this title page is a good point to just talk about where everything matters. And it's, yes, it's just a title page. It's just my name. It's just the word portfolio, but it's there's a lot of elements that went into this. And I can't tell you how many, like you you know, Karen, how many hours and hours and hours I spent on layout. But I think it paid off because it's, if you look at this, this uh, cover page, it's the fact that the Samuel Hardwick and we, you and I went back and forth on how big should the text be? How small should the text be? The fact that it's in that, uh, that layout where it's in the bottom third of the page, which is more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, the honeycombs on the side allude to the idea of nature, which is my entire theme throughout my portfolio, is this idea of nature working against industry and how we should integrate industry and nature together. And even before you open the page, there's some subtext that's going on with this. So. Let's go to the ne next one. So personal statement, uh, this again, just a pretty simple. I have my statement of what I want to do. Uh, you can see that environmental sustainability is the first thing that jumps out on the page. So while I wrote something, what I wrote is irrelevant because the only thing you need to read is environmental sustainability and next to it is my picture. So I'm attaching this idea to me from the very beginning. Um, table of contents. So again, here is my contents. Here is, I, I only did, I think Ryerson had 12. You could have up to 12 pieces of artwork. I only had 10, but it's because, and this is something I think is really important. I watched a lot of YouTube videos on portfolio work and people who didn't get in to Ryerson. And I saw that they had a lot of work where they just tried to fill up to 12. They, they added pieces that they felt well, I should have 12 pieces because they give me a max of 12, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted to be proud of every single work that I presented. I didn't want any filler work in this. 
And I think that that's important. I think it's okay to have the minimum as long as you're confident in every piece that you've presented. One other thing I should say here is the way I laid out my entire portfolio is the first part of it is talking about environmental sustainability. The second part of it is artwork that's inspired by environmental apathy, so against nature. And then the third part of it is combining the two together. So there's a story going through this entire portfolio. Yeah, and I want to mention something. Can we go back? Um, you are on to something that's really successful in the table of contents that even professional um, portfolio uh, coaches would would tell you to do. That we we want um, to have images included in the table of contents that allude to some of the artworks in the portfolio. And we want to structure the table of contents as if it's like the, the title page in um, you know, a really nice coffee table book, right? So you, you wanna really present yourself professionally and in a logical manner. And so the great thing what Sam's doing in his portfolio, he has an overarching theme, both of who he is, what he cares about in life and what he's showing in his portfolio. It's grouped logically and we're shown visually. Um, like everything has this language that he's been talking about that he learned from that professor during his masters right? And everything carries meaning. And we went through several different layouts trying to clean it up and keep it simple. What is the best way to lay this out? And so it's really a good job. Clean, simple, lots of open space too. He's chosen black, it could be white. Uh, but the information it's organized, but everything has meaning. And you'll see that as we go through his work. So this is something you wanna do somehow when you're working on your final presentation. So you need to leave, you know, a couple of weeks to, before you submit to be just working on layout. This matters in architecture, okay? And I truly believe as people will see as we go on, my artwork is not what got me in. I think it was my layout, the professionalism that comes across throughout this portfolio that helped to get me in. Um, in all honesty, I'm not trying to be self-deprecating. I don't feel my artwork was as strong as it could have been, but there are ways that you can get around that. One of them is through layout, and we can discuss that more as we go on of how I present my work in a way that looks better than it actually is. <laughs> That's what happened to Adam too years ago, that he knew his work wasn't stellar. Um, he knew he was strong in ideas and he made a really strong layout and they saw that it's because that's a really important part. If you study, um, if you watch videos about professional vi um, portfolios, if you watch videos about professional architects and how they present their ideas to sell their ideas, if you follow anything about the Jarka Ingalls in, in a company big, you'll see how much the way we visually communicate as architects is really important. It's part of the process. It's a minor part in a way. It's really the stuff of what you actually design that matters, but this is part of it. So right away, Sam is showing that he has that awareness, right? And it helps balance off, especially if you don't have absolutely stellar, amazing sculptures and paintings and drawings, then you make sure you spend more time on layout than somebody who might have more skill, may not need to quite as much. Okay, so let's carry on. You alluded to like lessons that I can take going forward. And yeah. I watched a video on a person who works for Zaha Hadid Architecture, and they were talking about portfolios. And one small thing she said, which I think is so important, she said, in the end, everyone's design is cool. Everyone's design is interesting, but the designs we pick, if everyone's design is on the same level of interest, it's the little details, it's the presentation of how you show your design that matters more. Interesting. I think that's really important. Oh, good to know. Yeah, and, and that's something to carry forward. Okay, so this page, uh, Karen and I discussed this a lot, and it, it really benefits to have a high quality image, but 
we decided on this idea of using a full page to present just it's just the title it's just going into the next thing but the benefit of this is while i only get 10 pages or 10 artworks i get to add more pages into my portfolio that gets to display work in different ways like this where it still follows the guidelines um but i get different images of the work that i'm presenting so i think that this is a really important i guess sneak thing that you can do with your portfolio is by adding these titles, you get to add more work and more visual interest. And again, this isn't, you're seeing a portion of the design. So it's just enough to want you to turn the page, but not enough that it gives away the entire thing. Yeah, so this is a really great thing to do. And this is very common in professional portfolios as well. Do a full page bleed um, with a good graphic title. Um, what you probably could have done, um, inside the, the little um, hexagon there, you probably could have put the number of the project. And I'm sorry yeah, if I didn't yeah. think of that yeah. before. <laughs> but, <laughs> that, that, might be, be, that might be useful. Um, so great, you know, and so this model, you know, it's, it was a good model. It's not an absolutely stellar, amazing model, but he made a photograph that makes us curious. It's got a really nice composition. So this is something you can do to make more of the work you do have. Take a great photograph with a wonderful composition. Boom, make it big. Less on the page actually gives more visual um, impact than more. Okay, so this was my essentially my number one piece. This was my final design of the thesis project that we worked on in the port prep class. Uh, and there's a lot that's going on in this image that I, a couple things I want to highlight is one is my building is, it's just some circular discs. And you can see if you look directly at the image, my drawing skills are not incredible by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think that my my drawing improved drastically from the beginning of this process to the end. I clearly have a lot more work to do, but there's ways to get around this. So one thing that Karen suggested, which we went forward with, was putting the item at night. By putting the building at night, it hides some of the imperfections that maybe you won't see, and it's more visually interesting. Uh, so that was one thing that we did. And then I have a side view and a top view, but they're very simple. The, the design aspects of the building on the top view and side view are simple, but look professional. And I think it's important. You're always trying to find ways to present your work in a way that's visually interesting, but polished. And I think that that's what this page comes across is the idea that the drawing might not be perfect, but the entire idea theme concept is polished around the idea. Yeah, and your concept comes across. So this is really important, especially if you're one of those students like Sam that has strong ideas and there's, you're still working on building your skills, your, your visual presentation skills of drawing, etc. Then, and even if you do have fantastic skills, your ideas are so important to architecture. So the way he's shown it, he's got you know a nice visual image. We've got that repeat of the same graphic, a quote about what is this project about that's bigger and noticeable. Um, so don't give me a paragraph. They're not going to read a paragraph. It just becomes a space holder. He's got features, right? And we've got just point form notes that tell us in a snapshot that I can grab quickly looking at it, what is this about, right? And then tells us a little bit more on the next drawing, very clear, tells us what the media is as well. Um, and he's continuing with this theme that helps us to to both organize visually the information, but is linked to the ideas conceptually. So getting your ideas across in like where somebody can grab the idea really quickly, because you got to think about those professors are looking at thousands of portfolios, right? So you want your ideas to come out 
easily accessible to them. And Sam did this very successfully with this layout. And for him, this laying it out with that, that black white or the, the, the white versus that sort of navy blue really, really works, right? Um, and the ideas are simple and straightforward, but there's a lot of depth to his ideas as well. And he's been able to get that across really quickly. So think about how you can do that. Because sometimes, you know, you might have an amazing idea, but if they can't see it easily and quickly without reading a whole paragraph, that's not going to be successful in your portfolio. Okay, you have to make it really easy for them to understand all that wonderful thought and effort you put into it. Okay, let's go to the next page. Um, and just one very, I, I think my biggest tip for anyone doing a portfolio, if you want to worry about the little things, I wanted to get to this page before I mentioned it. But if, if you look at the front view of my building, all I did was the reason I chose the dark blue background and the reason that it looks like there's an abstract background on the back, but that's my building. That's the three, that's the three panels. The background oh, yeah. is the three panels of my building and it's dark blue because my building's at night. And well, whether people notice it or not, this is, I think, such an easy way to do a very interesting and dynamic background is take an image that you have, that you like, simplify it, refine it to just its core elements, blow it up and that's your background so that those three stacked blocks are the building that's so cool i never even noticed that that's yeah and I think but at some level that some subconscious level it all connects that's fantastic yeah and that's i i love <laughs> this because I'm and even there's a I'm feed on it too blue. right like that's not a dead just black blue there's a a very slight um coloration change right it, yes there is and the gradient yeah the gradient is complementing the gradient in the background of my building in this image yeah so it's small details like that that i think are really important but in a really easy way to make a dynamic background is just take something part of your design blow it up and make it your background <laughs> sweet that's a great tip Oh, this okay. is gorgeous too. So uh, you've got the little glow around the most important uh, images. Maybe tell us more about this page. Sure. So this this is as the title suggests the concept map for the design. Uh, we we decided Karen and I decided together that a concept map was important because it kind of shows your thinking process. So it shows the people deciding if they want you in your in their program how you think and if you can take your ideas from concepts to to final design which is as my portfolio goes on goes through those steps but all of the words all of the text while important to me i know that people aren't reading reading it they're not going to sit on this page and read every single bubble but that doesn't matter because the only thing i want you to read are the things that i put a picture behind and lit up those are the only five things you need to know about my building is that it's made of hempcrete, it has health benefits, it's got bamboo, natural light, and biophilic principles. All the rest of them, while adding to my building, don't matter, realistically. They're not going to be read, but it's okay, because I'm just getting the ideas across to the person looking at my page. This is what I want you to remember. But that said, they might read it. And what this shows, this shows the thought process. So one of the things that you'll you'll get from the course with us uh, guys is that I, I teach you what the design process is and what the creative thinking process is. And the way Sam could get to these good ideas that he's highlighted is he went through all those thoughts. Yeah. We did mind mapping. And then the great thing is that Sam found a way to show his mind map of all that thought that's there. And even if they're not reading every bubble, they see the connections. They see that you thought this through. You know how to think from globally and in detail, right? And so that's a really important aspect of architecture. And we use bubble diagrams and you know all those kinds of, of things early in the design phase. So this mind map what's great you found a way within your graphic 
to show it so effectively. Um, I'm just, I think it's just brilliant. Um, and so this is part of what you want to do, not just show, look how well I draw. Um, you want to show how you think and find a way to present that clearly. Um, and that even if I don't read every bubble there, I can see he's thought, right? He knows how to go through the thought process of a, a complicated project. And then he knows what's important about it too. So that he's telling us so much about himself in this one page. Um, so that's a really useful thing. We're learning so much from you, Sam. This is just ah. brilliant. And see, that's when just, they saw that Sam is brilliant. <laughs> you know, not the best at rendering and drawing perspectives, but adequately good, right? And that's what matters. You don't have to be perfect at everything, right? But he knows how to think and he knows how to show us what his thought process is because that's part of architecture. We have to take our design team, our client, you know, whatever, along with us or, or politicians, whoever, all the stakeholders have to understand what we're thinking and why we want to do this solution and why they need to pay that much for it. <laughs> so you have to be able to visually communicate and show you, you can think, this is brilliant. I love it. And, and this went that... through a few renditions too. Oh, yeah. So like yeah. Sam didn't just, just do this. He tried lots of different layouts and we had sessions together to help and Sam, I mean, we had some sessions, but you went through a lot of this on your own. Did you have anybody else advising you as well and helping you with this? Um, no, well, yes, my partner throughout this entire process, she was instrumental in, I, I can't tell you how many times I asked for her begrudging opinion about, oh, do you like this tint of blue or this tint of blue? <laughs> do you like the line one degree this way or this way? Um, she was very patient with me throughout this entire process, but other than, yeah, it was you too. But the, the biggest thing that, again, I would suggest to others is be willing to take feedback and criticism, but still be confident in your own ideas. Don't get bogged down with what too many, I think asking too many people isn't the best I think in the world because too many opinions muddies the, your own opinion. And I think at some stage, you got to make a decision. I like this better. And I'm, I'm going to go forward with this idea. Yeah, that's good advice, Sam. Let's look at what else you've got. Okay, so here's the development of concept page. So one thing that Karen mentioned to me, and I think both this page and this one illustrate was, she said, Sam, what you lack in skill, you make up for in work ethic. So how can you show them? She told me, find a way to present your work that shows how many versions of it you did. So this image to the right is my building. I think I drew it 25 times, 25 different versions of it. Some of them in wood, some of them in concrete, some white, different layout, different background. And the way I presented that was I just threw them all over the floor, well, strategically placed, thrown all over the floor. And then I took a picture of it. And the, the four images on the left are initial sketches where I just kept sketching because one piece of advice, Karen, I don't know if I ever told you about this, I that's really stuck with me, is you said your first 100 ideas aren't bad, but someone's already thought of them. So you got to get through at least 100 ideas before you get to something that might be original. And that really stuck with me. So it's even if I liked an idea, okay, great. Now, how, what do I like about this idea? How can I push it further? Now, what do I like about that idea? How can I push it further? And you just keep refining and refining and refining and refining until you have this image, my thumbnail sketch on the bottom left-hand side, which was just three loops, three circles. And from there, I had my building. But it took, I didn't, I didn't get to that point. I didn't sketch this once in an hour and say, okay, got it. This took and it doesn't have to be that long, but just an hour a night for a couple weeks of just sketching, just sketching and sketching until you finally say, I can't push this idea any further and I love it. So I got, I got there. Yeah, and part of your process was making simple paper models as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so we see one of them and you made others, but we, um, we see one of them there that you put on a grid so that it could help you 
make a perspective drawing because you didn't because you know you didn't have a lot of perspective drawing skill or maybe any uh, even um, so so this helped you you can easily make a paper model without even knowing how to make a model really well and then you take a picture of it and he's got his grid there with the center so now it helped him be able to draw the perspective by using that photo base and it helped him visualize his idea and draw it well. So it, like simple way. So that's part of what you learn in our course, how without having a ton of experience, what tricks you can learn so you can design and think in 3D by manipulating simple paper. And then how can you take that to help you be able to draw a perspective uh, it's like drawing perspectives of free, free form things isn't necessarily easy if you don't have much experience with drawing. And so Sam really was able to use these tricks really successfully and show us his process. So including concept sketch and how you evolve your ideas um, and showing your work ethic is important. So, and you've done a really nice layout of it. Um, and again, you've just got this graphic theme that runs throughout the portfolio that really works. Let's see the next page. So this was my, this was a conceptual model I made and I knew again through port prep that my initial rendering won't be as refined as it could be. But what I lacked in that ability is I could make a really great model. And again, this model, it doesn't I want to stress this to anyone watching. It doesn't have to be expensive. All this model is, is some rolled up foam I got from Michael's, maybe eight bucks, um, toothpicks, and some bamboo little pieces of wood for maybe $1 that I bought from Michael's as well. And then my trees are just crumpled up pieces of construction paper glued to a toothpick and then glued onto the ground. And it it didn't, but it didn't matter that it wasn't expensive because if you do it, if you do it with care and put in the time, you can get a three-dimensional model. And I think the 3D model really helps visualize the building I was trying to design. And Karen and I talked about this too. It's, it's a building that looks good from every angle. So that's why there's different angles and different sides because you want to show that I'm taking this idea from sketch all the way to model. I'm going as far as I can with it. And I've made something that at least for me, I'm confident. I like this building. I'm proud of the building that I designed. Yeah, and it had, again, it had really strong concept behind it that you were able to show us about. And we're not telling you everything about it. We'd be here for hours if you told you everything yeah. that Sam put into his portfolio. <laughs> so there's a lot of thought behind this that is really cool. Um, so yeah, really great. Um, I wouldn't mind actually if there is more contrast between the black background of the, because uh, I can't really see really well those uh, hexagons. I wish that blue was slightly stronger in, on this page so we could see the black shapes of the hexagons better. But it, it doesn't really matter. That's like a minor, minor thing. This looks amazing. Good job. Nice layout. Um, and, you know, um, what you want to do if you've got a model, some a bigger um, image, and then some smaller ones, right? Um, you probably could have even less on the page, but don't do more than this, right? Um, usually less is more. <laughs> yeah. So don't try to bombard everything onto the page. Um, but this is really effective. I love it. Let's look at the next thing. Oh, and so so then he's got a full page too. Nice. Full of the model. Great, looks good. Okay, so now this is just again title page. I'm into the next section. I took uh, some nature photography. I picked my favorite image, blew it up, and made it the background. And I think it just visual interest. Yeah, looks gorgeous. So this was just some photography I did when I was uh, going, I was on a road trip through the US and we got to Yellowstone National Park. And these are just some high res images of a national park. Um, but again, they're all nature inspired. They're still with the entire theme, the natural theme that I'm trying to present with my portfolio. 
uh, which I think is important. It's not just some random pictures that I like that I thought were good. I picked these on purpose because they're nature. Mm -hmm. And and they're also sort of trying to show us this juxtaposition of um, what happens to nature from environmental damage, right? Um, so it is showing us an appreciation of nature and also um, some of the desolation that that occurs. Yeah. So and yet they're, they're they've got a really they've got a connection to each other in color in form. You've made a nice layout out of it. It's still got the general sort of graphic feel of the overall portfolio. So here's some of the reasoning behind his project. Right. It shows us that what he sees and what he cares about um, in really striking photographs, great compositions, beautiful. Uh, this was a painting I did. And in fact, it was the first painting I ever did in my life. I really want to stress that because I think it's important for people. Just because you can't paint doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Uh, or just because you don't think you can paint doesn't mean you can't paint is a better choice of words. Uh, and this was just, again, there are thumbnail versions that I presented. The background on the left side is the actual image. And then on the right hand side is my painting with some detailed shots. And Karen, this is something that I really, really helped me out throughout that class is we worked on this painting of what's based on the skills that I have, how can I use those skills to improve the initial version that I had of this? And we went through two or three versions of this before getting to this final result, which again, might not be the best painting, but it's the best that I could do. So I'm proud of it. That's great. Love it. Um, full, full bleed of the painting. So you get the entire shot. Uh, this is my this is a this is a picture it's an image i found of all these oil hammers and just this complete desolate uh nature there's pretty much no nature in the image just a couple of areas of green and i thought this picture illustrated uh clearly what i was trying to get across where how our industrial expansion is at the is at the expense of nature and that was something i was trying to present throughout the portfolio i think this image presented it well it was done in oil pastel so anyone who is maybe not sure what creative work to do i would highly highly suggest using oil pastel it's a really if i found it to be a really easy medium to work with as someone who's not very creative um it was easy to get your ideas across and in a way that was visually interesting so i would say i would highly recommend oil pastel to people cool yeah i agree yeah, in fact, I show a little bit about some ways of how to use oil pastel in the course as well. Yeah, it, it makes it makes it easier to do something that's kind of artsy for people who don't really have a lot of art experience. Yeah, it, it's there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. So yeah, I, I love this image. Really I'm just blending with my thumb. Like yeah. it's not it's very easy to work with. Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, this was an abstract art piece that was trying to get across the concept of pollution infecting nature. Again, Karen and I talked about this, and I think this is another good tip for someone who maybe isn't that creative or technically sound, is do abstract work. Because if it's abstract, it can't be critiqued as uh, being a poor visual representation of something real. So you can get around that, but still present your idea in a visually creative and stimulating way. So we talked about me doing abstract work, and I think that actually helped a lot. Good. And you do have a natural sense of graphic design. And so like abstract art, there's still great abstract art and weak oh, abstract wow. art. It's not that it's, it doesn't take skill and, ch and challenge, but if it's not representational, because it takes years of learning how to do, to really do representational artwork effectively. So, um, but, you know, Sam's great with color and form and texture and composition. And so abstract allows you to, to play with that without having to have this, um, 
you know, judgment against does that look like whatever he's trying to represent. And so here he can just focus on idea and mood and feeling um, and, and feel free to explore without that extra pressure of who does it look right? You, you don't need years of training necessarily to, to have something that's effective enough to put into your portfolio, right? So yeah, cool, good. And then he explained a little bit about what it means to him. And um, it's really quite striking. I really like how you've been able to, like, I love this trick you did of cropping into a section of it um, and laying it out with the title on it. It really makes an effective page. So your page layout really, like if you had just put that on the page, it wouldn't be as strong, right? So yeah, I and that so. you know what your work's about and yet you can explain it. It's not just, oh, I, I threw some paint on the page. You, you, it's got a, uh, a, a meaning to it. It's great. Uh, okay, so third section now. So now this is environmental integration. And again, I wanna just mention one other thing. All of my pieces on purpose, I was trying to use different mediums because I found some portfolios where they just keep using the same, here's another acrylic painting, another acrylic painting. So on purpose, I decided, okay, this is photography. The next one's acrylic, oil pastel, watercolor. I'm trying to show them I'm okay using different mediums. I'm, and I'm willing to try different things, which I think is important. Yes. In fact, another prof um, I know from RISD, um, she said that in an undergrad portfolio, you want to show uh, one of the things you want to show is your willingness to explore and learn. Uh, you know, you want to be this sort of open book sponge <laughs> to show that I'm ready and I, I do have uh, some skills in various ways of creating. So you're going to show some breadth of skill and that openness to explore different media. So Sam was able to do that. I agree. Show different media, different types of work. Yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, again, it's a it's an abstract work, but it's something I'm actually quite proud of. So all it is, is it's the colors, it's just blocks. It's pieces of cardboard, as you can see on one of the side views that I've painted on top of, then I cut them out and then I place them strategically. This is to allude uh, of a cityscape, but it's the environmental integration comes across because it's silver which alludes to the buildings and then green and blue which are natural colors they allude to the idea of nature uh it's a simple concept but i think it's striking it gives a 3d impression of the image and furthermore and again something that i learned through port prep that can make your work way more visually interesting is just get rid of the floor let something so i could have had this building cut in half where the entire bottom of the all the buildings are flat but instead I let them kind of bleed up and down. And I think it just adds way more visual interest to the entire image. Yeah, and I think that this is a neat trick, like doing um, like assemblage work or doing um, collage, um, low relief type um, sort of, they're almost sculpture, but they're also painting and they're graphic design. Like that's a really cool type of artwork to make in uh, an architecture portfolio. And it really helps open up your creativity if you're not really an artist per se. It like, you know, we're the type where who draws and paints really well. Like this is a really cool piece. And again, Sam is bringing his strength of um, concept and symbolism into play, right? And his ability with uh, balancing graphic images. And it's got a lot of um, the principles of, of design and elements of design as well. So he's working with repetition and rhythm and harmony and anomaly and color and line and shape. So one of the things you can do in your pieces is learn about what are the principles and elements of design and work with those. And he's done that um really quite effectively i love this piece it really looks strong great 
Me too. And I think it goes, I think it comes across to what I was trying to say at the beginning is my biggest attribute was just, it might be simple, but everything matters. It's, it's a purposeful, the color choices were purposeful, not just because, and it's, it's not just green, it's deep green. It's not just blue, it's a light blue because that alludes to sky and ocean at the same time. That has a double meaning. And the gray is a silver because I wanted the shine to come through. I wanted it to feel like a building. And it's everything about this piece. There's nothing I did just because I liked it. Everything has to, there should be a reason to why you're doing everything. Why did you choose the colors? Why did you do the layout in that way? Why, mm -hmm. for example, the tallest building is in the rule of thirds. That was done on purpose. That wasn't an accident. <laughs> yeah. I think it, all that stuff needs to be thought of if you're going to present any sort of work. Yeah. And you know what? I think that you could have uh, told us a little bit more about the idea in the description to help them know what you like. They probably know because they're designers. They can probably yeah feel it and in, in, into it but you might want to you explain that really well maybe just a little bit more in your description like one more sentence even about those colors for example and what they mean so that they that you sure that you're sure that they get it <laughs> right um i think it still holds on its own very well without that but you probably could have added that so and that's one thing that that Sam, when he wrote his descriptions, even though he knows they may or may not read them, which is one reason why he's got like a sentence separated out. He's got bolding so that you, you, you don't have to read the whole thing if you're really busy, you know, but you get the idea in a snapshot. But he's also carefully thought about what he wrote and he knows why he did what he did and can articulate that. Right. And if he was applying for Waterloo, for example, if he had wanted to go there, he can explain his work. Um, and so some of the way you hear Sam talking about his work, remember that, try to put that kind of thing in your descriptions. And if you do have to interview, sort of notice how he's talking about his work, that he understands why he's doing what he's doing and that he can articulate that. So, um, so you have to start to start thinking about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because sometimes we have these sort of gut intuition and sometimes we just do. And that's great that you can just do, but we also have to be able to understand why we're just doing that. <laughs> there are reasons behind these decisions and the best designers can do that. Um, both from a place of intuition and with direct knowing and awareness of it. Yeah. So let's see what else did you put together for us? Uh, so this was my, this is my last piece. This is the, so this was, again, I wanted to finish with something architectural. So I just did, this is a simple sketch. Uh, this was a living bus shelter. So it's all I've done is I've sketched out a bus shelter and then I've put plants all over it. But again, it's everything on this page has reason. So the title block at the top has a lot of things relating to air quality. So toxic air to blame, China officially uh, constructing a forest city. And while you might not read every one of those headlines, it's establishing this entire page is an establishment of an idea to a proof of concept. So it's, there's my initial research is in the title block. Then I have my initial sketches. Then I have my two dimensional sketch and then a 3D color rendering. And it's just a very mini project all done on one page. And then the text block is just the research behind it and how I got to where I got to. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he's showing there too is his ability to understand how to show um, uh, something in 3D and something in 2D. That's an important um, skill to be able to do um, for somebody who's going into architecture, to be able to understand how do I, sh what is what's called an elevation view. And so he's got, looks like a, an um, isometric view and the elevation, the side view. 
right? Front view and side view. Um, and so learning about how to draw plans and elevations just a little bit, they don't want a lot of that kind of stuff, but he, and they don't want like all architecture, like Sam's got a nice mix, some architecture, some design things that aren't architecture, but they're sort of related. Um, some art stuff, it's all got a nice relationship to each other. And, um, you know, when he's playing with color and all of that, but he's showing his understanding of 3D versus 2D. And that's an important skill to develop um, so that you'll be able to really handle things when you're in school, right? So learning a little bit about how to do stuff like that, a little bit about drafting can really help you to succeed when you do get accepted. So this is great. So this is not just, oh, look at this cool idea that he's got that fits into his theme. He's showing us his understanding, right? In a really simple way, which is great. Um, so, uh, and he's been able, like, cause if he just put those drawings on a page, it wouldn't be as strong. The fact that he's got this, the, the uh, black box with the graphic that tells us about what it's about, his conceptual development, the the text like it really holds together well doesn't it and so he's really been able to show himself as being a strong um candidate here um even though he's not like a brilliant gifted artist right but but he's really developed like this actually i love the plants i think they look great hmm. yeah i love it and, and, and you understand how to draw in 3d this is fantastic you learn so much it's amazing Wonderful. And again, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone ever doesn't know how to draw something, I learned how to draw plants by Googling architecture plant sketch in YouTube and just watching videos until you find a version or something that you like, and then you go from there. It's pretty, it's, it doesn't have to be that complicated. No, like, and that's the thing that I hope that you guys can get from uh, that are watching this. If you don't know how to do something, find out how to do it. You know, um, yes, you can go off a lot of your own, all the skills you already have, but you're to make a really strong portfolio, you, you need to do some of your own research. And it's a great idea to take some courses that are targeted towards the skills that you need and to get some advice from somebody who has the experience to help you develop that. So, you know, you might choose to take a course with Port Prep but, or you might have a friend or a family member that's in somehow related into design and architecture in some way that can give you some advice. Having some kind of mentor is so useful. Um, so is there anything else you wanted to share with us, Sam, about your portfolio itself? Is there a finishing page or like, how does the, the thing end? Ah, nice. I like that, that you finish it. It doesn't just stop with the last piece that's cool so. yeah and i just the I, I i don't know if it matters but the the little signature i saw on another portfolio and again the thing and ah nice i like that that you finish it it doesn't just stop with the last piece that's cool so. yeah and i just the i i i don't know if it matters but the the little signature I saw on another portfolio. And again, I don't want anyone copying my portfolio, obviously, but finding an element that you like and bringing it into yours, I can absolutely say, I didn't think of sketching out my name. I saw that on someone else's portfolio. And I said, that's a cool little idea. I'm going to bring that into my portfolio. I do. I like it too. I think it really works. Yeah. So, um, so being inspired and picking up a few good ideas here and there, definitely do not copy people's no. work. Um, you know, it, the, the professors are really well aware, <laughs> well trained to look for plagiarism. Okay. <laughs> so you want to make sure the work you're putting in your portfolio is yours. It's original. Be you get accepted on your merits, but you can certainly be inspired by other people and, and, you know, out there, whether they're at the student level or at the professional level. So yeah, doing research, looking around, grabbing ideas that you go, that's good. I love this. I think this is really great. Um, 
So let's maybe, now, is there anything that you wanted to show before instruction? Do you have a before and after instruction kind of something you could show us? Um, let me take a second to see. Or even just some of the sketches from early on in the course or something. That, just that's what I was just thinking. Of how much you grew in this time. It's like really fantastic. There, oh, I might have something here. Perfect. You're <laughs> I should have asked you before. I didn't think of it. <laughs> Sorry to no, 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 no. That's that's fine. I'm just I'm laughing because uh, it, it it's been quite a little journey here. <laughs> I wonder if I can open these. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I found a good one. This was week yeah, one where right? we just have to- We're not seeing yeah, it. Oh, right there now. we go, okay. So here's week one. This is where I started. This is from week one to that portfolio. This was the, this was the work that I presented the first time around. So I think this is a very way. good, example of this is the best that I could do at the very beginning. Yeah. So yeah, you did come a long way. But even even the thing that was great about you, so even though, you know, this the skills were rudimentary, you tried lots of different ideas. And and that sort of the beginning of our course sh um, kind of shows you a few different ways to um, to explore ideas and and Sam was willing to explore and try different things so that in, and it ended up really making a big difference so you can see you've got to give yourself time to develop right not just the skills but to let the ideas kind of filter through your consciousness and evolve over time so this is something you don't want to rush and, and this is one thing that Sam said he picked up from one of the other videos from one of our past students is don't leave it to the last minute. Give yourself time because it's very stressful when you don't. I mean, and that particular student did throw it together in two months, but it was a very stressful and, you know, hardly any sleep two months. So he wishes he had started in grade 11 is what he said. Um, so now, um, Sam, let's uh, stop the screen share. And then can you, is there anything that you would say, I think there's a couple of things. Is there any other advice for students um, that you have sort of in general that you haven't already said? Yes, actually, yes, I do. Uh, there is one, thing that I can talk about port prep, but uh, I'll get to that. We can talk about how port prep has helped me throughout this process. But one big piece of advice that I would say to people, I actually got it from, there's a famous architect that I'm sure if anyone's applying to architect, they know who Frank Geary is. And Frank Geary said, uh, and I should say this, I should preface this by saying, whether you like Frank Geary or not is irrelevant. I think this advice is important that he said, when you get to a point where you hate your design or you hate your sketch or you can't stand looking at it anymore, which anyone who's done any creative work has been in that position, he said that's the best point to be in because then you're finally ready to give up on things and finally innovate and finally push your design to the next level. And I thought that that was such a interesting quote. And I definitely throughout my design found times where one, I thought it was perfect. Good. This is as good as it's going to get. And then I go into the art port prep class and then you get some critique and then you'd realize how you could push it further and take it further. And, and at the same time, I got to points where I felt burnt out. I hated my design, but the reason I hated it is because I was holding on to something that I felt like I needed to make the design work. And then when I finally decided to get rid of that thing, it made the entire design better. And I think oh, cool. that that's a really important place to be. So for those people who are doing creative work and say, ah, oh, I, I just hate this. I can't look at it anymore. 
take pride in that. Feel good about that because now you're you're one step away from truly innovative design. You're one step away from making your work jump to that next level. That's great advice. Yeah, I love it. Um, now, what did you find? What did you find helpful or the most helpful about taking uh, the course at Port Prep for your architecture portfolio? I, I can absolutely say without a doubt that I would not have gotten into the architecture program without Port Prep. While I have said throughout this time that you can look up YouTube videos and learn, that's true. And I did that a lot, but it was what I got from Port Prep was direction, was what to look up, what I needed to improve on. And I can Google how to draw some flowers, but I need to know that I need to look for flowers and things. It, it, it sounds, I know that sounds small, but even in my, my initial design, in this initial design, you can see that there's plants. I wanted to do something with glass and plants, but what I got from port prep was direction of how to get from this to my final building design. The theme is still there from the very beginning. The theme was I wanted a building filled with plants, a, a conservatory. But what Port Prep did, what you did, Karen, was guide me to get me to that innovative design, lead me in the direction I needed to go. And I think that's encompassing of the entire portfolio. I think what Port Prep does is they figure out whatever class it may be, whether it's the animation or the architecture or any art program that they provide, they will give you the tools to push your design further than you could have thought ever possible. They give you the tools to, they figure out what you're trying to present, the concept, and then they give you the tools, the means, and the direction to present that idea. So that's why I think Port Prep, like I said, I would not have gotten into the architecture program without it. I'm confident in that. Um, well, that's great to hear, and I'm glad to hear that we we were helpful um, to your process. And I think so. So in architecture, ideas are so important. Same thing, animation too. Of uh, you know, we it's ideas, it's story, um, and it's how to evolve our work to a higher level. And a lot of times, unfortunately, in a lot of education and job situations, we aren't given that um the opportunity or the time that where you can find um a really fully thought out idea um there's lots of great I ideas and and this is true there's many different ways to do something and sometimes good is good enough but too often we we stop too soon in the process just to get something done and we have to get away from the thinking of, I've got this assignment, I have to get it done. You, you really, and that was the great thing about how you were in the classes, Sam, is you were always shooting for the most evolved you could do at any point in time. Yeah, so, and I think we need to take more of that approach. So the making of the portfolio isn't just make some works that look good in your portfolio that can make you get in, it's the whole learning process of how to think and how to present and, and how to evolve your ideas and then how to physically make them. So a lot of the skills, Sam, that you learned were, were practical skills as well, not just the ideas. It was like, well, how do I draw that? And how do I use a marker? And how do I make a model? So there was a lot of practical skills as well that you picked up. And then also just by doing, <laughs> you learn by doing. And yeah. a portfolio forces you to do that. So it's, it's not something you can just slough off. And even some of the students that I've helped with their portfolios that do have considerably high level skill, they also put a lot of effort into how they're gonna present their work, which pieces they're gonna put in, which pieces they're not gonna put in. Like all of that, it, it's hard to know what to do on your own. Um, so no matter what level you're working at, getting some help from somebody who does know how right? Whether it's us or not. Um, so I guess that it's been so interesting to hear about your process, Sam, and I'm so, so happy for you. Um, and you're a brilliant guy. And 
I found it was just wonderful to have you in the classes. And so it's Sam, in fact, is so fantastic at thinking through ideas and helping people like you helped other students in the class develop their ideas and get to the essence of their project that if you guys are interested, Sam is available to help you think through your ideas. So we're hoping to work with Sam a little bit, sort of as a student mentor, because he's just profoundly amazing at concept development and just siphoning down to what are, what's the essential thing going on here. Um, and so, and, and it's just so positive too. And I think that's something that you can all take away from, hopefully from this interview is that positive attitude, but realistic knowing that you had a challenge ahead of you and you knew you had to work at it. You knew you had to research because you, you were, you know, realistic that you knew your skill wasn't at a higher level. Um, but it, it's possible to do. I wish I had known and had the guts when I was younger. And so I really want so many of you to go after your goals and dreams. It's possible you can do it. It does take effort and work for sure. It's not something you can just throw together. You know, um, it would be quite amazing if you could just throw it together and get in. You, you're probably a genius if you can do that. So maybe some people could, but most of you are gonna have to really put some real effort to it. And the students, you know, that I find that don't get accepted are the ones that one are either overconfident um, and don't take it seriously enough or people that just don't put in the effort. They're just, they don't realize how much it really does take. Um, so, and you really put in your, in your all and I'm so glad that they saw in you what I saw in you. And it was just a delight to help you along your path. So I, thanks so I much for sharing that. with other students. We really appreciate you taking the time to share your journey and uh, your whole process with with us and our any student that wants to watch this. <laughs> Jim, any last words of um, anything you'd want to say? Yeah, parting wisdom. I would just say that, like you said, it's not about how smart you are or where you're coming from. It's how much work you're willing to put in. I I didn't have a portfolio when I started this. I didn't know how to do 3D sketches or paint or do watercolor or do models or any of that. But through work ethic and guidance through port prep, I was able to go for in one year from no portfolio to getting into an architecture program. So I just want people to understand that anyone can do this. Trust me when I say I am not an exemplar. I just put in hours and just be committed to your goal. Whatever the goal is, is recognize that maybe the goal should be more important than everything else. The goal might be more important than sleep. You might have to stay up late. You might have to put in extra hours, but it's just about how much work are you willing to put in? Yeah, and you, and I think you were willing to put in the work because you knew you weren't happy in your current career and where it was going. And so you had that extra drive, which really yeah. helped fuel you. But I've also equally seen, you know, people in high school knowing they want it and willing to work for it. Um, yeah. So anyway, congratulations. I hope we get to hear from you um, over the years as you're studying to, right. to hear a little update <laughs> on how bad things are going. And I am just always, I just love helping students learn and grow their skills and who they are. And um, so thanks so much for your time today, Sam. And I, and thanks for all of you that actually watched the entire thing to the end. I'm sure there's some great info you're gonna glean from that that you can apply to yourself in your own portfolio. And if you have questions and want help from me at Port Prep, you can reach out to us, ask for a free portfolio assessment, or just reach out to us through our website. And if you say, hey, I would love to talk to Sam, let me know we could set it up. <laughs> so he's got lots of he learned a lot. And I think because you have some prior experience, you learned from that too. And so thanks so much, Sam, and good luck to you. And I hope you have a great day. And 
you better keep in touch with me. I want to see what you're doing when you're in school. <laughs> One, if you're thinking of applying, apply, sign up, sign up for port prep, sign up for the one-on-ones, do it. You there, I promise to anyone who's even considering it, you will not regret it. It will only benefit you to sign up to port prep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good to hear. So, all right, guys. Well, bye for now. And I'm here if you need me, reach out and I'm happy to contact you through messenger or email or whatever. So take care, Sam. Bye to everybody who's watching. Just keep believing in yourself. <laughs>